What is up, sports fans and sports bettors? It's your boy AP back with my man unit on another episode of the Fast Five. Hope everyone is doing well out there as the football season rolls along. Major League Baseball's postseason is here. NBA Media Day just occurred in a city near you. NHL season on the horizon. Plenty to talk about, plenty to get into from a betting perspective here. Uh, and this show, as always, is presented by the fine folks over at the great Super Book Sports. And uh, away we go. You can follow me on social at Media by AP. He's at Superbook Unit. And uh, here we are. I cannot believe it is October already. I woke up after a, um, I don't want to say, I, I don't know how I want to describe my Saturday night. It was a Saturday night and I woke up and I looked at the my phone. I'm like, wow, October. It's just here. And I walked and got my coffee this morning. It's cold outside. Uh, football season. We're officially in the thick of it. Baseball. What a time to be alive, my friend. Yeah, there's a coolness in the air, even here in Vegas. You can feel it a little bit, but it's it's a very comforting time of the year when you've got college football on the TV, you got uh, NFL on the TV, MLB postseason starting up. Like I said, that coolness in the air. Um, maybe get some into some good foods like chili. I know you always mention cooking on these uh, sports days. It's just a elite time of the year right now, early October. Yeah. I love it. You know, I got my little jacket on, walked to the, across the street, get some coffee. And, you know, it's just uh, it's a great time to be alive, my friend. It's also a great time to sign up with Superbook Sports when you use my promo code APBETS. When you sign up, deposit and place a wager on the same day, folks, you're going to get yourself a bonus of up to 250 bucks when you use my promo code APBETS. You can do that in Colorado, where I live, and a handful of other states, including Arizona, Iowa, Tennessee, New Jersey, Ohio, Maryland, and some others coming soon. So be sure to use that promo code, uh, and away we go. But we're really in the thick of, you know, we're, we're kind of past, you know, we're getting the, like the quarter mark of the NFL season. College football season's rolling along, so I feel like we're starting to get some identities on both sides with both, uh, you know, leagues and whatnot with the college football and the NFL. Um, let's start with the collegiate ranks where, you know, we had some pretty good competitive um, conference play over the weekend. Uh, let me just start here. I love how I went on the show last week and I said Lane Kiffin's never won a big game in his life. And then I'm sitting here after the CU game watching this shootout occur with Ole Miss and LSU, and I'm like, he is going to win this game. And shame on me. Because I kept live betting LSU. I got them like plus 250, plus 210, boom, 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 boom. I thought they for sure were going to come back. Uh, so tip of the cap to Lane Kiffin. He finally won a big game. And shame on LSU. What a disappointment they've been this year. Yeah, I mean, they're 3-2, and two and they're still ranked 23rd in the country. I know a lot of people have some choice words about that. Um, but that game was a shootout. That had to be the game of the day. Uh, props to you if you were on the over. But I, I didn't have any action on that game. But it was just one. That was uh, pretty thrilling to watch. It was back and forth, high scoring, um, came down to to the wire. And, uh, you know, just a classic uh, SEC early conference play game. And uh, hopefully we get some more action like that this week, too. Yeah, 55-49 the final score. Did you see that video of the security guard on the field after the game? Yeah. He was, like, trying to stop it's the like, kids from rushing the field. He misses everybody, and then he just trucks the girl. And then you could yeah. tell at least he felt bad about it, and he looked like – uh, towards the end of the video, he was going over to help her. But that was a, a great viral video uh, to cap off the weekend. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I, I mean, LSU's got all the talent in the world on offense. But, I mean, like, is Brian Kelly, like, does he even consider, like, the possibility of, hey, if we want to win a national championship, let alone try to win this conference, let alone, you know, the East, the West, whatever it is, we need a good defense. Um, what a game that was, but classic SEC college football, to your point. Um, a handful of interesting games early. Georgia had to sweat out a 27-20 victory over Auburn. Looked like Auburn had him on the ropes. And then somehow, some way, Penn State manages to cover 41-13 to against Northwestern despite – were they down at half? I, it, no, was, it, was, it was way – It was 10-10 to at halftime, and they ended yeah. up winning, I think, 41-13. to The spread was 27. And uh, they're 5-0 and against the spread now, and a lot of people – um, are are considering, you know, do they know the point spread? Because they, in all their games, they haven't given up. No matter uh, right. what the score is late in the game, fourth down, whatever, they're going for it. They're not trying to, you know, let off the gas pedal. They're they're going full go until the to the end. So that might be something to consider uh, when you see Penn State with, you know, these bigger spreads because it looked like there was no chance they would cover, and they they did end up covering. It was ten to ten and a half. Yeah, uh, what's the saying over at Superbook? Good teams win, great teams cover. And, oh, yeah. you know, to that point, though, 
I was listening to Vsin this morning and some of the other gambling outlets. Like, well, t- let's talk about USC here quickly as well. They end up beating CU forty-eight to forty-one. And let me also say this: if Travis Hunter plays, I think CU has a pretty damn good chance to actually win that game. I'm surprised it was as close as it was. Um, but like, you know, there's a lot of people that are down on USC because of like their defense and like it hasn't just been this Colorado game. But the rebuttal in what I was listening to is what team in college football is truly the team to beat, right? Penn State, yeah, they cover, but, you know, first half mishaps against Northwestern. Georgia, almost, you know, competitive game against Auburn. Like, you haven't seen Alabama's loss. Texas, you know, there's been some interesting matchups. They've been looked pretty good, though. Like, you don't have that one powerhouse team that's kind of revealed themselves so far, which is why I look at a team like Penn State or a team like USC, and despite they've had their shortcomings, Who's the team that has not skipped the beat so far? So I think well, for the I, most part. I said it last show that it was Washington. They actually had their first yeah. test of the season this week um, against Arizona. It was really their first tight game. But if I say the team to beat, I'm still on that Washington boat. Yeah, and I texted you after that USC game, and yeah. I was like, I, I think your take was uh, a proper take. So I might have to look at a little sprinkle so, there when it's all so said. Who do you think so far this season? Actually, we just posted this on Superbook uh, on Twitter. Um, what's the best conference in college football so far this season? I think it's the one that's going to essentially be no more when it's all said and done. I think the Pac-12 right now has been – maybe it's not the best collectively. It's certainly up there, but it's the most fun, I think, right now. Not just because of CU, but Oregon. And speaking of another game, Oregon State takes down um, Utah on Friday night. So I feel like it's just been back and forth, back and forth. I love the Pac-12 this year. Yeah, so I actually uh, I saw also this on Twitter, the the <clears throat> records of all the Power Five conferences through week five. Pac-12 actually has the best record. The The whole conference is 41 and 17. The SEC is second at 48 and 23. Big Ten, 45 and 23. Um, but if you would have told me before the season that we would be talking after week five and we would both say that the Pac-12 has been the best conference in college football this season, I would have thought you were crazy. But I think that's the case. I mean, the SEC – there's really only one team that I think is, a, you know, an elite top tier school. And that right now is Georgia. And they've been tested a few times and have played some close games. So I'm not completely sold on them going for the three peat. Um, and then you got the big 10. I think that do actually have three teams that can compete for that title with uh, Michigan, Ohio state and Penn state. But the PAC 12 collectively, I think has got to be the best conference so far until they prove otherwise. But um I'm, I'm I'm shocked that that's the case, but uh, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand up and I'm gonna say I was wrong. And uh, the Pac-12 right now is the best conference, and it's gonna be sad that they'll be the Pac-4 next year. I, I'm here for it. It is kind of poetic, right? Like you know, might as well go out with a bang if you're gonna just disband in the conference when it's all said and done. But just the collection of talent, like Oregon looks really good. You know, Oregon State so far has lived up to the billing. Obviously, Colorado has been like the biggest story in sports with what Prime's been doing. Um, you know, Washington and Washington State. So like the conference cuts deep. Heisman winner and Caleb Williams and USC. Uh, UCLA, you know, I believe they are only one loss at this point in the season. They're not even a ranked team. So it's a pretty – Utah hasn't conference. even had Sam Rising yet. So, I mean, Utah still hasn't even reached their potential. They're 18th in the yeah. country. Uh, you know, I think they could do a lot more damage later in this season. They've got some pretty good games to be able to showcase. I know they play uh, USC later this year. They play Oregon later this year. They play Washington later this year. So towards the end of this, you know, schedule in the Pac-12, we're going to see some really big marquee games. I'm excited for that. And we're going to see who's who's really, you know, top tier in the, in the Pac-12, which, as we both said, is probably the best conference, surprisingly. Yeah, well, the cream rises to the top, and we'll figure out, uh, you know, what that exactly is as this season progresses. But we've got a pretty good slate of upcoming college football games this week. Obviously, you've got the big Red River Red River rivalry, a lot of R's, uh, with Texas and Oklahoma. And Oklahoma is obviously, you know, one of the more – I mean, this is one of the most storied rivalries just in college football in general. you got Texas laying six here. Um, Alabama and A&M play this weekend. Georgia takes on Kentucky, who's ranked at the moment as well. So um, – an interesting slate of college football games this this upcoming week as we move along throughout the slate. But I, I'm very curious about this Texas Oklahoma matchup because I feel like Texas, you know, they've done their part. You know, they beat Alabama. They they've had some you know maybe first half woes, but they come back and you know throttle Kansas in the second half. Um, you know, I think this is a big test for Texas. Obviously, the big win over Alabama already, uh, but that's certainly the game I've probably got my uh, my eye on the most so far in this upcoming slate. Definitely. I, I, I agree with you. It's got to be, you know, up there. Uh, 
Actually, I've got my eyes on another game also at 9 a.m., so I'm going to have the two TVs going. I got LSU nice. at Mizzou. But back to uh, Oklahoma, Texas. If Texas is truly going to be back, this is going to be the game they've got to win. Obviously, it's the biggest game left on their schedule. It's actually the only ranked opponent that they have left on their schedule. So, you know, barring any extreme hiccups or, you know, laying an egg against one of these lesser teams later in the schedule, this could be their season right here. So if they are able to, you know, win and win convincingly against Oklahoma and cover this spread, I think they've got a really good case to make the playoff this year. So this could be their season right here. So I'm definitely leaning toward Texas in this game. I got a soft spot for Texas always. Like, I don't know. Like I, I they've, I've always talked about with my friends, like my college football memory starts, like I grew up in LA, like the USC, Texas, you know, national championship game. And then followed by Florida and all that. And, you know, I, I think not that the tide is changing, right. But like Alabama isn't good as they once were. Obviously Georgia is still very good, but like we just talked about the PAC 12, like, you know, you're, you're getting some new feel, you know, in college football this year. And I think to your point, this could absolutely be their season, a win and a big win and a cover here, I think goes a long way in solidifying just how good this team can be, especially with the move to the SEC coming up. So I think it's important for them to kind of, you know, flex in that sense. But I mean, it's under a touchdown and like, that's the thing in college football. I mean, that like, it's so when I hear under a touchdown in college football versus under a touchdown, the NFL, like it's two completely different thought processes. So I would lean towards Texas myself. I think Quinn yours has been balling out. Uh, Sark's got the team playing well. And I think Oklahoma's been fine, but I think collectively, you know, Texas has that chip on their shoulder and I think they know what they're playing for. So let's see if they can get up because if they do want to compete for that championship, this is a game that you not only should win, but look confident in doing so. Yeah, and they're going to be set up to a perfect path to the playoff if they do so. So this mm -hmm. is uh, definitely the, the biggest game on their entire schedule. Yeah, we'll see how it shakes out. So we talked well, Alabama a and What's the other games that you got try on going up this weekend? Uh, well, I briefly mentioned LSU-Mizzou. Mizzou is 5-0. and They're ranked yep. 21 in the country. LSU, like as I mentioned, is ranked 23rd despite having two losses already. Both the pretty good teams, though, with uh, Florida State and, of course, that shootout with Ole Miss last week. Uh, but I've been pretty impressed by Mizzou. Obviously, they haven't you know, beat some huge teams, but they, they beat uh, Kansas State in a pretty good game. Uh, last week, they, they took care of business against Vandy. Uh, I've been impressed with how Brady Cook and, like, some of their more explosive weapons, like Luther Burden, have been able to connect. So this is a game, actually, I've had circled since the beginning of the season, seeing the potential of both these teams being undefeated at this point. Obviously, LSU has lost two games and Mizzou's still undefeated, but Mizzou's uh, plus six and a half right now. Um, this one's in Columbia. It's a 9 a.m. start here in Pacific time. It'll be 11 in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I was hoping this was going to be a marquee matchup late night game because, you know, we saw weird things could happen in Columbia at, at night. Um, with last year, they almost knocked knocked off uh, Georgia when Georgia was number one. They really should have won that. Yeah. Game. <clears throat> but I'm really interested to see how this plays out. LSU who obviously was just in a, a – you know, a heart crushing battle against Ole Miss, how they're going to respond to this and, and how Mizzou is going to respond to playing a, a, what some people think is an elite opponent, despite their three and two record. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Mizzou uh, is able to, you know, step up to the task or if uh, they're going to fall short again. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting spot because I look at it situationally and I look at two losses for LSU coming off a shootout, like, I think LSU is going to play absolutely freaking pissed. And the thing about LSU is it's about their defense, not about their offense. Like, they're off in regards to their struggles. Like, LSU can put up 40-plus when it feels like in the blink of an eye. And I think Mizzou's been good, but, you know, this LSU, te LSU team, I know you just, you know, kind of made the joke of some people think they're elite despite their 3-2 and two record. The talent is elite, at least on the offensive end, and they have talent on defense. It just hasn't come together. And so I don't really have a feel one way or the other, but – I do wonder if, and it is two losses, so you know the national championship is essentially out the window, but, you know, playing for pride, playing for the brand that is LSU, I do wonder if they just come out and, and kind of flex on them with all the talent that they have and the speed and, and, McDan and McDaniel and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. I don't really have a feel on this one, but I'll be watching it because I think it's an interesting matchup, and LSU has proved me wrong twice this year, and I want to see if they can bounce back. Yeah, another one, and uh, I mean, I've got a list of all the games that I'm keeping an eye on here. Um, I know we said the Pac-12 is the most impressive conference so far, but almost all of these are SEC games. The next one I have on the yep. list is Kentucky against Georgia, 
Right now, Kentucky is plus 14 and a half, so over that two-touchdown mark. Um, but Kentucky was real impressive last week. They're 5-0 and now, but last week they came out and they spanked Florida. Um, we just talked about how Georgia has yeah. been kind of struggling with some of these lesser opponents, um, you know, keeping some close games in back-to-back weeks. I like this Kentucky um, plus 14 and a half, keeping it close against Georgia. Um, I, I expect them to continue kind of the, some of the momentum that they've had. And I was not very high on Kentucky going into this season, but I've, I've been pretty impressed with um, some of the things I've seen thus far. Yeah, that they've definitely caught me by surprise. And with that big of a number and with as hit or miss as George has been in some of these games, like, I, I would definitely look towards the dog. Because like in my general betting philosophies, more so with the NFL, but whenever it's like a big spread like this, I always naturally in my head – bet the dog like before I actually bet anything and the only way I switch to bet a favorite is if I really convince myself and like I understand momentum plays a role but this is still George at the end of the day but I have just not been impressed with the Georgia Bulldogs as I was last year or the year before where I just have the utmost confidence and then we go out there and put up 55 plus points and just absolutely destroy everybody in their path I don't that doesn't mean they're a bad team that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be the favorites with the natty but that's just how I feel about the regular season maybe some complacency maybe they know how good they are and all they're trying to do is win games because they know if they don't lose they're still straight when it's all said and done um I would definitely look towards Kentucky here you mentioned it undefeated scrappy football team SEC football you know, obviously there's a big gap in, in skill set and whatnot with these two programs, but you're going to give me two touchdowns with a Georgia team that has looked a little unimpressive a couple times already this year. That's where I would look early in this week. Georgia hasn't covered once this season. They're 0-4-1 point. Red. So they've been Great playing point. a lot of close games. I know um, they're, you know, like FCS opponents that they played earlier in the year. Their spread was like 50-something, um, and they were yeah. unable to cover that. So. <clears throat> um, I, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I think I'm going Kentucky in this game. I like it. I like it. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one um, for sure. And that was actually one of the games that I had written down as well because it's 14 and a half, not 13 and a half. And, you know, it's college football, so you can get out of hand quickly. But I like having that hook on the two touchdowns as well. What about uh, Alabama, Texas A&M? I think we briefly mentioned that. Yeah. Beginning. As did Alabama get their shit together a little bit, or uh, uh, I, I just don't know. Like I don't know either of these schools. Like like A and M is a colossal failure with all the money that they've pumped into that program over the last few years. Like Jimbo Fisher can't get his head on straight, and Alabama like it does feel a little bit like the you know Nick Saban fare thee well tour a little bit of you know he's getting up there. Um, you know they're still obviously very good, and yeah, they did kind of get it together last week. But at the end of the day, like. You know, I, I think my gut would just tell me to bet Alabama for essentially the same reason as to why I wanted to bet LSU last week because it's Jimbo Fisher and it's Texas A&M and they lay these eggs. Um, but you don't have that same stopping power with Bama as you have had in years past. But I do I, I do like the way they responded last week. Yeah, I think Bama's kind of started to get their, you know, act together a little bit. So, I mean, seeing a spread of this small for an Alabama game is definitely sticks out to me. Bama minus two and a half. I'm not as sold completely on Texas A&M, as you mentioned, but uh, I think this is probably a good spot to be on Alabama this week. And I think that line is likely going to move even more because a lot of people are going to probably have that same thought process as us. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting for sure. Now, but I think the games that we highly like, I mean, I'm definitely excited for the Red River. That's going to be fantastic. Um, you know, Kentucky, I'm very curious to see what they can do against Georgia. And obviously I got Coach Prime and company. They're winning big this week. Let me also, hold on, weekly Coach Prime rant. I'm going to chop this after. He said after the Oregon loss, better get me now. Better get me while you still can or whatever the line was. This dude is not lying. And I know they lost to USC. The way they played in the second half was night and day different than the way they played in the first half. Unit, I might have to put in a call to Mr. Cornegay and Mr. Murray and ask them about this one. There is no way, and we'll have to see how the offseason goes, this team is going to be top 10 in championship odds entering next college football season. Because Dion said it, he's seven or eight dogs away. They're looking good. I mean, let's wipe the Oregon slate clean. Okay, you want to downgrade TCU, you want to downgrade Nebraska? Sure, go ahead. USC, though, right? Everybody's big on USC. Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, the whole line. They came back in that game and showed heart. They were down, what was it, three touchdowns early? And Shadur Sanders put the team on his back. If they Travis Hunter is a difference maker. Travis Hunter plays in that game. I think the outcome could be very different. Cormani McLean stepping up or Marion Miller stepping up at wide receiver. All I'm trying to say is 
this team will be a problem next year in college football. This season for Coach Prime, Shador, Travis Hunter is the appetizer. Next season is the main course. And let me tell you, they're eating 96 ounce tomahawk steaks next season. Colorado is going to be a problem. Top 10 betting odds for the championship next year. Dion gets this team right. Book it. I'll see you then. We're going to have to see what happens this offseason because obviously right now they're not in that position. And, oh, um, they're getting there. You know, but we talked about it a little bit in the last show. Dion's obviously going to – you know, get this team right in the trenches where they're they're weaker than the rest of the teams in the Pac-12 through the transfer portal and, and through recruiting. Um, but, you know, mentioning the the CU-USC uh, game last week, I know they only lost by one score, but they never had a chance at any point in this entire game. Um, but they do have some pretty get-right spots coming up here. <clears throat> I mean, this week, Arizona State and then, then Stanford, which should be an easy win. Um, coming up before their schedule gets a little harder. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how CU plays against some of these more comparable teams in, in the Pac-12 because I really didn't think – obviously they didn't have a chance against Oregon, though. But I think despite the score being closer than it actually was, I didn't think they had a shot for one second in that game against USC. Hey, you and I were watching two different games. Uh, we could agree to disagree. I thought – my big thing is if Travis Hunter plays in that game, I think it's a totally different game. And what I, the reason I say what I say just in general is because Cormani McLean, who had not been playing through the first handful of games, finally got some run after Coach Prime essentially called him out publicly. You're going to have two consensus five-star recruits on, on opposite sides of the field, Shiloh Sanders as well. They've got all the skill position players. All it takes is when they build that team up in the trenches, I'm telling you, problem. I will be betting – a lot of money on CU to win the national championship next year in the Superbook Sports app. I'll put it that way. I'm feeling pretty good about it. But, yeah, I am excited about these upcoming games for them, um, and away we go. But it is what it is. You got any other college football thoughts, or should we move over to the uh, national uh, football? Well, the last one I had I'll just quickly go through is Notre Dame-Louisville. Louisville has been yeah. really impressive this year with Jeff Brom and then Plummer, both of them coming over from Purdue, um, who, who was in the Big Ten championship last year. But Louisville – um, I think this is going to be the first game where they're underdogs. They're plus six and a half against Notre Dame. So Notre Dame's been tested a lot this year. They've had some pretty tough opponents. I know a lot of people like to poke fun at the, the scheduling of Notre Dame, but it's hard to find a tougher schedule than Notre Dame's played so far this year. I mean, yeah. last last week they, they played another close game against another good opponent in Duke, and they're in for another uh, test, and they're going to have their hands full against Louisville. So this is one I'm going to have my eye on. I don't necessarily – um, have a lean one way, especially with Louisville being plus six and a half right now. We'll see where this line moves later in the week. Um, maybe I'll jump in on some action uh, later, but I've, I've had this one circled for a few weeks because I've been pretty impressed with what Louisville's done so far this year. Yeah, no, Louisville has been fun. Um, I think you make a great point about Notre Dame as well, although I had an absolutely horrendous beat on Duke last week with that Notre Dame game. Just, just disgusting beat. Uh, so I've had a couple of those. Texas Tech earlier in the year against, what was it, Oregon? Disgusting beat. Um, I've had a couple. So, you know, we'll see. Well, I know we're about to get into the, to the NFL, but hopefully you weren't on the Chiefs covering on that Sunday night game with Mahomes I, sliding inside the one. I was actually – I didn't even watch that game, to be honest with you. I was asleep. I had to go to Nuggets Media to that next day, and I passed out like 8.30 and – I'm happy I did. I did do like a little SGP at one point for like five bucks that didn't hit. But I speaking of the NFL though, I cleaned up. I don't usually gloat or brag, but I got I got to put my chest out with this one, man. I went absolutely ham on the NFL this past weekend, starting with Thursday night football. Lions money line, lock of a century right there. Rams plus one on Sunday. Bills minus two and a half. Texans plus three. Jags minus three. Bucks plus three in the hook. Baltimore, Cleveland under 41, and Rams, Colts over 46 and a half. Um, that felt really, really good, especially after I was pretty sad about how LSU did me on Saturday night. Bounce back, strong NFL Sunday. And there was just a couple lines, like I was talking about with some folks from the Action Network yesterday, and there was a couple of lines that were – not like a chalky day necessarily for the public, but I feel like there was a lot of lines where some people that understand sports betting made some good money, like Tennessee plus the points against Cincinnati. Like that's probably not a very public play, but people know how Mike Vrabel is as a dog. Rams on the road is a short favorite against Indianapolis. Um, Texans going up against Pittsburgh. Like, so maybe not very sexy public plays, but 
as someone who's been betting the NFL consistently for the last three or four years, like those are spots that I identified early in the week as showing some value given the public perception and injury report the whole nine. So um, salute cleaned up this weekend in the NFL. Yeah, I, uh, you know, in, in the contest around town where you do five picks against the spread, you mentioned the Bengals Titans game. I actually had the Bengals in the contest this week. It was one of my two losses. I've actually gone three and two every single week. Um, so I can't complain about that, but my thought process behind this is the Bengals, if they can't win and cover the two points against against Tennessee, who might have like the worst offense in 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 the NFL, their season is over and they're trash. And I th- I'm starting to lean that direction with the Bengals. Obviously, Burrow's still got that, that that injury looming, and they can't do anything offensively. They can't stop the run. They're they're in for a lot of trouble right now, and the. The, the Bengals are going to be facing a very uphill battle to, to be able to get into the playoffs this year, especially being in that AFC North, which I have some, you know, two pretty strong teams in that division and the, the Steelers are pretty scrappy themselves. You know how I feel about Baltimore. And here's the thing. I, I'm so not surprised. I've been making money left and right fading this Bengals team to start the year. The only difference between the Bengals at the start of the year this year compared to maybe the last two or three years when Burrow's been healthy is – just that Burrow is actually really playing hurt this year. But even when he's been healthy, think back to last year, historically with Zach Taylor and the Joe Burrow combination, Cincinnati does not hit their stride until close to the middle portion of the season. Now they've been worse this year than, you know, probably what recent memory would suggest, but this has been a trend with Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor that they do not get out to the hottest of starts. But what they do is keep their foot on the gas once they get to the middle portion of the season and stay hot going into the postseason. So I, I'm curious to see how Joe Burrow's, you know, ankle situation or cat situation ends up playing out over the course of the season, something that it looks like is going to just be a factor moving forward this year. But I am not surprised whatsoever. I have been fading this Bengals team left and right. I was on the Rams on what was it, Monday Night Football. I was on um, – I was on a uh, Houston over the weekend and there's been a couple more games. Cleveland. I think they played earlier this year. Loss is a favorite in that game. You know, I have been, okay. yeah, I, I actually think I may have bet against Cincinnati almost every single week this year. And I think so I, I've actually so. done the same thing. Cause I knew they get off to these slow starts, but I've been trying to time up when they turn things around. And I thought that was going to be this year or this week uh, against the Titans. Obviously I was proven wrong and I'm not sure that that turnaround is ever going to come for this Bengals team. Um, they just seem to struggle to get all these things put together. I mean, their defense has been struggling. Their offensive line has been struggling. Obviously, Joe Burrow has had a horrendous start to this season. Uh, Jamar Chase is, is seeming to get pretty frustrated. This Bengals team is just a disaster right now, and I don't know if they're going to be able to turn it around. Yeah, it has not been great. Uh, you know, looking at their upcoming schedule, they got – the Cardinals this week, who they should be able to beat Seahawks and 49ers back to back weeks after that. So it's a, it's an interesting stretch here, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, I think like the NFL this past week, nothing earth shattering to me to stood out, you know, Eagles took care of business. 49ers took care of business. Um, bills went into shootout, which I was not surprised by. I was on the bills um, just let down spot for Miami after putting up the most points in the NFL since the sixties. Um, nothing really, extremely stood out to me the Patriots stink the Jets stink the Giants stink um you know pretty not a chalky week all all across the board but nothing nothing earth shattering to me yeah actually my other loss was the Patriots and then their offense is just oh Uh, I could have told you that one I thought they were going to be well actually on the last show you said you didn't see the Cowboys covering against anyone but I think did I say that pissed off against uh Oh. From coming off of that Cardinals loss. Wait uh, till I talk about the Cowboys this week. I got my yeah, thoughts. The, the Patriots, their offense looks completely terrible. And then their defense in that game losing, you know, two of their best players with Christian Gonzalez and, and Judon. It's going to be a rough road ahead for the Patriots. But looking ahead, I kind of got my eye on the Patriots against the Saints this week. Ooh, you're not a Saints guy, huh? Interesting. I, I just – I don't know what to do with this Patriots team. Like, I just don't have any feel one way or the other. And it's just like – like, I'm not a Mac Jones guy. I'm not a Saints guy either. Like, I'm not well, the biggest Derek Jones Carr fan. Play, you got well, that, I think so. No, Because Belichick came out after the game and was like – I mean, typical Belichick. I think he'll continue to play. It, but honestly, even if it's Zappy, I don't know. I don't upgrade Zappy that much more. I'm not a Zappy diehard like a lot of people are. No, I, I don't think there's a huge difference between the two either. But Mac Jones, that was one of the worst performances I've ever seen. Did you see yeah, that screen grab of him? Uh, you got the score 
scoreboard at the bottom. It's like 38-3, and he's yeah. just on the sideline smiling. I don't know uh, what, what's going on there, but I unfortunately like and uh, have my eye on the Patriots this week. I don't know what's wrong with me. It was um, karma for the nut tap on Sauce Gardner. You know, yeah. The, uh, the betting. Hey, that's not cool, man. I can't. I know the NFL didn't have substantial evidence. It's in grade school. It's in the playground. Like, he's, don't he's do that. A, it built uh, quite a resume of some of these dirty plays he did against yeah. the Bears. Brisker, he, he kind of yep. spiked them, uh between the legs, and then also he had that gator roll against, uh, I think it was Brian Burns. When they playing yeah. The no, that, that's, yeah, Mac Jones, you know, it is what it is. But uh, other games, Jags, Bills in London. I'm excited for that with Buffalo laying five and a half. I kind of lean towards Jacksonville. Um, Giants, Dolphins. I'm surprised Miami's only minus ten and a half. I guess Saquon might be back for the Giants in that matchup. But now it's a bounce back spot for Miami. Giants freaking stink. Brian Dayball tries to go up to talk to Daniel Jones on the sideline last night, just throws his iPad out of frustration. Like, I mean, that that team is a disaster, and they're stuck with Danny Dimes for four years and like 160 million. Um, but the two big games are Eagles, Rams, and Cowboys 49ers, but a decent slate all along. Yeah, I, I circled a few games. I mean, two that stand out to me early as uh, we were just talking about. I think I'm going to get back to fading the Bengals and actually against the Cardinals, a team that's been impressive. You know, a lot of people thought they were going to be the worst team in the league this year. That's clearly not the case since he's at Arizona. Arizona's plus three. Um, I think the Cardinals should be able to – I've been impressed with Josh Dobbs, but also their running game. Nice. They've had some explosive plays. Uh, Connor has been really good. The Cardinals actually have the number – two run offense and the Bengals have the number 31 run defense. So I do expect the, the Cardinals to be able to run all, all over this team. And if they're able to get off to an early lead, I think they're going to be able to take care of business and cover. Um, the only other game that I have circled um, is, is Houston at Atlanta. Obviously Atlanta is Tell coming me about back. This. Atlanta is coming back from um, London. So they, they've got that long trip, maybe some jet lag Houston's plus two. Now they were plus one Yesterday, I liked them then, and the line has moved in, in my direction. So I like Houston plus two. I like the way that their offense has been rolling. Uh, I like the offensive coordinator, Bobby Slowick. And and C.J. Stroud is good. He's not just another rookie quarterback that needs developing. He is good. He's been figuring out, um, you know, he's he's been putting up some historic numbers as a rookie. Um, so I, I really like that Houston in this spot. Um, facing Atlanta, who's coming off of an ugly game from Desmond Ritter and the rest of the team um, in in London. Desmond Ritter might be worse than Zach Wilson. Um, He's the worst quarterback in the league. I think that's pretty yeah. clear. I'm shocked to see that that was his first multi-interception game. But he, they had nothing going offensively, even with giving the ball to, to Bijan and some of their playmakers. I don't know. And I get that he's, what, a second-year player. How are you not starting Taylor Heineke? Like, you're, you're a handful of games into the season now. Like, make the switch. But I, I like Houston in this game as well. To your point, I think Stroud's been the best of the young rookie quarterbacks so far this season. So um, that's one that I've got my eye on. Eagles-Rams, I think, is fascinating. Eagles lay in the four and a half. The Rams aren't as bad as I think people think they are. Or, like, maybe they've just been a little bit forgotten. Like, they're only one full year removed from making the Super Bowl. And, like, let's also forget that they didn't have Cooper Cup last year. Stafford was banged up. Now they got Puka. They got uh, Tutu Atwell. Uh, what's his face? Cooper Cup is coming back here in, in a couple of weeks. We hope as well. My fantasy team really hopes that. And you know, I hate the Eagles, you know, with all my being. And like, I'm looking at over a field goal with the Rams team at home. I know they have no home field advantage, but at least they don't have to travel. I also feel like Philly's due for a little bit of a letdown spot. I'm not ready to go. I, I, I want to see how this line shakes out because I would not be surprised if this gets up to Philly five and a half, maybe even six. So I'll probably wait to this for this game a little bit later in the week. But I think this could be a sneaky spot to back the Rams. I, I, you know, if you go to our era NFL head coaching draft, you know I'm a McVay guy. I think Stafford's playing well, and they came off a big win, overtime win against the uh, against the Indianapolis Colts. So that's a game I got my eye on as well. Yeah, I have this one circled, and I think I'm going to do the same. Where I'm just going to look at this game and see where the line moves throughout the week. But you know, <clears throat> early on when I first saw this line four and a half, I was leaning towards the Eagles, but then. You know, the, the Rams are one of those teams that I hate betting against as a pretty decent sized dog because, you know, sometimes Sean McVay just draws up these plays that no matter what you do defensively, you can't stop. They're just drawn up the right way to where, you know, guys like Puka and Tutu Atwell find themselves open. And I think is, is mm -hmm. Cooper Cup able to come back this week? 
Or is that later? I think they're taking them off IR. So it starts like a 21 day window. So within the next three weeks, you'll be back. 21 day practice window. Yeah, that's right. So probably not this week, but coming soon. So the, this Rams team is another team that uh, is not as bad as people expected earlier in this year, I think. Yeah, no, uh, I, I completely agree with you. So we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. But. <sighs> Week five, baby. Sunday night football. The Dallas Cowboys take on the San Francisco 49ers in San Francisco. This is not responsible betting. Actually, I should say that it is responsible betting because I'm betting, you know, it's responsible betting, but I am betting with my heart. This is the game unit. This is the game where I called my pops yesterday. I was talking with him on the phone, did it, caught up about the game against New England. And I was like, he was like, I don't like him. He's like, they're going to lay an egg, quarterback, lights bright, the whole thing, right? And I said, I don't necessarily disagree, but but can this team play with some edge for once? Can, can they look themselves in the mirror and say two years in a row, you've been embarrassed by this team on the national stage to get bounced from the postseason? The first year, it was ineptitude with the clock at the end of the game. And, and last year, it was just straight-up failure of epic proportion losing to the San Francisco 49ers on the road with a rookie quarterback and not being able to generate anything offensively and the horrendous last play to end your season. An absolute joke. Can this team get up, look themselves in the mirror, grab the bulls by the horns, and play Dallas Cowboy football and beat the San Francisco team? This is the game. If Dallas wins this game, I think they can win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying they will. But if they win this game, they convince me that this is a legitimate Super Bowl contender. So I'm sitting back. I've got my popcorn ready. San Francisco has been nice. They're, they're due to come back down to earth a little bit. This game is in San Francisco. McCarthy has a San Francisco connection. I don't care if you got to go. Go get Michael Irvin to give the pregame speech. Get locked in. Get locked in. Play for pride. Show that you have some sort of passion. Show that you're not going to get pushed over and embarrassed year after year after year after year by the same organization, the same team. This is the week. Dallas wins this week against San Francisco, legitimate Super Bowl contender. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I, I know we're probably going to get into our power rankings a little later, but I don't think anybody matches up to San Francisco. The way – I mean, they they look like the consensus best team in the NFL. But they're – where it's sitting right now is, you know, that dangerous minus three and a half. So um, I, I don't know exactly which direction to go to here with your Dallas Cowboys pillow is – so when you get pissed off, is that why you throw the TV during the games? This is the only piece of Cowboys memorabilia that I currently have in my house. This is the only thing with the star on it. Because I Are you not bringing the star back? I, I thought you uh, have been impressed. I thought about it, and then they lost to Arizona, and it reminded me why I don't do it. So not yet. If they win this week, maybe. Well, if I could still wear this with the performances the Bears have put up this season, I think you could put your, your star on. God bless you. Like, seriously, God bless you, my friend. But, um, yeah, wh why don't we get into those power rankings, though? I mean, I think we kind of went over all the games. Do you want to give your 10, then me give my 10, or do you want to go, like, 1-1, one, 2-2? One, two, two? Uh, I think it's probably a little easier, more organized, if we just go uh, someone first and then someone next. But I guess I'll start first, and let let's go from 10 all the way to 1. Um, I actually I put 12 just because uh, – it was it was hard for me to come up with this list, but twelve I've got the Buccaneers, eleven the Chargers, ten the Browns, nine the Ravens, eight the Seahawks, seven the Lions, six the Dolphins, five the Cowboys, four the Eagles, three the Bills, two the Chiefs, and number one as I said the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, you have my Cowboys higher than I do, and I have teams that I hate higher than you do. I don't, I don't disagree with that list. Wow, so the Chargers make your cut. I think you said the well, Browns were also on you. We're not in the top oh, okay. ten. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. I like that. Interesting. Where'd you have the Dolphins? Six. Okay, so I have my top ten going from least to top. Bucks ten, Seahawks nine, Ravens eight. Lions seven, Cowboys six, Dolphins five, Bills four, only because they beat the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are the better team. So Bills four, Chiefs three, Eagles two, 49ers one. I think out of respect, as much as I hate them, you have to put the two undefeated teams at the top one too. Yeah, well, I think the, the Chiefs in week one were not the Chiefs. They, uh, you know, it's still lost. a loss. 
Yeah, very interesting way. I mean, a lot of mistakes by players who aren't having as big as a role um, now in this season. Obviously, with that was without Kelsey, but the Lions aren't a team to just walk over anymore either. I think we both had them number seven on our list. Um, so the Lions aren't the, the, the same old Lions anymore. Here's the thing. And we talked about this before the show, like power rankings is going off what happened last week and taking everything else that's happened into account. Like if I'm going best teams in the league, it's probably 49ers one, probably Dolphins two. No, nah, 49ers one, Chiefs two, Dolphins three. And then I'm probably putting the Cowboys four. If I had to kind of change it just based off how good I think these teams are talent wise. But it's always interesting to take that into consideration. I think Miami is just so legit. I think they are just so, so, so legit. And I know they lost to Buffalo, which is why I put Buffalo ahead of them. But I talked about it when we did a show about a month and a half ago. Buffalo to miss the playoffs was one of my long shot season bets that I was taking a look at. I think Buffalo is a good team, but I think what Miami has is special. So I'm excited to see how that, the rest of their season plays out. Yeah, Miami was my pick to win the division before the season. But uh, it's going to be you know, something that, something to see later in this year. Cause of course, last year, they kind of have that late season collapse. They had a real hot uh, start. Obviously they had some Tua issues, right. um, injuries and everything. And so they kind of fell off. Now it's going to be interesting to see how they respond this year and, and are able to finish the season. They could be getting Jalen Ramsey back later in the season and, and, and getting, you know, some key players back. So uh, we'll see what, what the Dolphins look like later in the year. But, but right now I've been really impressed. And I knew they were kind of, you know, due for a letdown spot this past week against the Bills. And the, and the Bills have been real hot lately, too, after a, a pretty slow start in the Jets game. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you as well. And there are some teams that I think have gotten off to slow starts, the Bengals, Chargers, among others, that I think are going to pick it up as they go along. But the one team that I expect to be there when it's all said and done I'd be surprised if the Dolphins aren't in a championship game as long as two is healthy. So that's how I feel about the NFL slate this week. But excited, my friend. Very excited. So um, our thumbs up, thumbs down time? Yeah, let's do it. Let's cap this off. Uh, my thumbs up. I'll go ahead and start. I already said it a little bit at the beginning of the show, but this time of the year is is the best time of the year when the, you get the cool air. Even here in Vegas, you get a little bit of a cool air, which is different than most places. But, you know, you got the NFL going full go. You got the college football full go. Starting that conference play. You got the MLB postseason started back up. NBA is 21 days away, I saw today. College yep. basketball is 28 days away. So we're, we're getting that time of year where all the sports kind of overlaps. We might get a few equinox uh, later. But this, this time of year is, is prime time for sports. Yeah, it is. It's my favorite time of the year of sports. The weather's changing. You know, it's not freezing yet, but it's also not like super hot. All the sports are on that. That's a fantastic thumbs up um, for mine. Some people might look at it as a thumbs down, but it's a thumbs up for me because I love the energy that this man portrays. And he, he's just like me and you and, and this and that. Nicole Jokic showed up to media day yesterday for the Denver Nuggets. And I was seeing the, the memes and the tweets. He looks like a guy that you had to drag back from vacation. He is not happy to be here. He's just kind of, oh, hello, moping around. Like, I just love how the NBA, he's the best player in the league and an NBA champion, and it's just another job to him. If he could just stay home in Serbia and race his horses and do this for the rest of his life, he would be completely content. I've already said that we're never going to hear from Nikola Jokic again once he ends up retiring. He wants nothing to do with this once, he's, when it, once it's all said and done. So my thumbs up is Nikola Jokic – treating coming back to the States and to the Nuggets and to the NBA as like it's a job. And the reason it's a thumbs up is because he represents the common man. Like, 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 like you know, like I just, I love the energy. Like, I love what I do. You love what I do. There are some times where I'm like, man, maybe I should just sit on the couch and play some Madden or, you know, sit on the couch and bet these games. And I just think it represents American culture perfectly of like, well, back to work. And I just, I love his energy. Best player in the league. You never guess it based off his appearance. Yeah, I saw yesterday at the media day, he was saying that he only picked up a basketball a few times during the offseason. But I saw the videos of him like partying and he's, uh, yep. you know, racing horses, doing all this stuff uh, in the offseason, just enjoying himself. I don't think he really likes basketball. He's just good at it and makes money doing it. Yeah, he's the NBA's anti-hero. He's, every, he's like the opposite of every NBA superstar, and I love him so much for it. So that's my thumbs up. For the thumbs down – I had a couple. Uh, this one's going to be more hyper local. So for all my Colorado people, you'll understand this. Right now, we if you have DirecTV or if you're out here, you can't get Fox 
So I don't have any of the Fox games for the NFL on my TV right now. So when CU plays on Fox's big new kickoff, I got to go to a bar or I got to fire up the illegal or not illegal, the, the alternative streams, excuse me. So the lack of between the nuggets and the avalanche not being on local TV for the last three or four years. And now I can't get Fox, which has always been my favorite because I'm an NFC over an AFC guy. It is such a pain in the rear end. I haven't subscribed to Red Zone yet because I got a buddy and I just go to his place and watch it. But I woke up and I was trying to watch the Cowboys game after I woke up from a nap. Lo and behold, this is not available in your area. Blah, 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 blah. So then I got to go sit at a bar, spend money and watch the game that way. So thumbs down for streaming sports in Colorado. Can't get the Nuggets, can't get the Avalanche, and now I can't get Fox for college football and the NFL. So that's a local one, but that's my thumbs down. Yeah, luckily I don't have to go with those issues, but that is something that I've complained about before with like the MLB streaming in Vegas. It's they so bad. All of the California teams, even though like San Francisco is like seven hours away or whatever. But my thumbs down is another thing that I've bitched and complained about before, and it is bitching and complaining from other people. This Thursday, we got a Bears Commanders game. I've already seen it online. Everybody complaining about the matchup. If you don't want to watch it, yeah. don't watch it. Football is football. I'm going to watch it. Obviously, it's my team. But the, but the commanders have been pretty impressive this year. And, and I, I think it's just wrong to be complaining about the matchups in football. It's the NFL. There's 32 teams. There's going to be bound to be some matchups that you don't like. But it's still football. Football, bad football is better than no football at all. So I'm going to be exactly. sure, sure you will be too. And, uh, and I – complaining already i think the bad football is only amplified when it's going up against the good games i will watch bad football when it's the only game on like it, it's when it's like like the bronco bear game for example i know that and and i was also going to go with the thumbs down for the broncos for winning that game what a pointless win what a pointless win we can get into that later with the nfl draft but um like when there's bad football going up again, like like what is taking me away from Bills Dolphins over the weekend outside of the local interest, right? Like that's what I'm not the biggest fan because I'm going to watch the better game naturally. But when it's the only game on, I'm in, and I actually like it because then I can focus my attention on it, SGP, whatever it might be. So I I, I agree. I think it, I think it's annoying. And, and why does anyone feel bad for the announcers? Al Michaels is making more money than I'll probably see in my entire life to call a worst football game ever. Nice. Why do we feel? Why do we feel bad? Like he signed up for it. it was free country, free will. You don't want the money? Okay. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I, I like your thumbs down this week. Yeah. And we're all paying for the game too because it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. So um, <laughs> it is what it is. But another week down, another week of football upcoming. The Major League Baseball postseason is here. Be sure to get those bets in with Superbook Sports. You can use my promo code AP Bets. When you sign up, deposit, and place a wager in the same day, folks. You're going to get yourself a bonus up to $250. So do yourself that favor and use my promo code AP bets when you sign up and away we go. Uh, any closing thoughts, brother, before we out of here? Nope. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm ready to get out of here too. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to go bet. I'm ready to uh, get ready for the football slate and away we go. But for you to in Nevada, I'm AP in Colorado. Get those bets in with Superbook sports and we'll chat with you guys next week.